Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Platitude Era podcast. In this episode of the podcast, we will be reviewing the movie Book Smart. This one is a gem or a diamond in the rough. It's like what Juno is. It's one of those movies that uh, you don't know that it exists, but everyone's talking about it. Synopsis, it's a high school movie about uh, two high school friends that uh, think it's cool to study, but then realize... It's not cool to study. It's cool to party. Did I get the synopsis right? Uh, I don't think it's cool to study was necessarily their modus operandi. <laughs> good word. It's it's a phrase, not a word. Oh, good phrase. Or I guess now, an idiom. <laughs> what'd you call me? I've called you stupid before, so it's nothing new <laughs> you haven't heard. <laughs> No, what do you think about the marketing? Uh, it looks like super bad for girls. <laughs> That's about all I could think of. It's interesting. Just uh, okay. So it's it. I, I'll I'll telegraph these thoughts later on in the review. But I'd seen trailers for this, and all I thought is. It looks like super bad with girls and it doesn't seem to be bringing anything new to the table. And I don't remember what movie we, we saw, but it, it showed this, this movie and back to back was the super bad with little kids movie. Uh, I don't remember what it's called, but I'm like, Oh, oh yeah. It's so funny that they have these two trailers back to back that are essentially the same plot. And they both have the exact same Run the Jewels song in it that's semi-popular and will be shoved in a million trailers. I'm like, ooh, Hollywood's out of ideas or something because <laughs> you're proving my point, which is, hey, it's just super bad with dot, dot, dot. Which I can do two more. This one, the girls' version of super bad, and I can do... Uh, the little kids version of, of Superbad, the little boys. It's called Good Boys. Oh, the Good Boys, yeah. No, not the, just Good Boys. Oh, Good Boys. Oh, it's like... Which uh, is ironic, because, like, I think it's produced by, like, Seth Rogen or, or whomever, you know. It says, you know, it's produced by the same people that brought you Superbad, or Superbad. So, interesting for Good Boys. Not as interesting for Booksmart. Well, I think that's it. I can just do two more. I can just do... The little kid version of Super Bad and the girl version of Super Bad. Uh, nobody else tried to copy the formula. Uh, they might make an old people version of Super Bad, or maybe that's already existed. Maybe there's like that Michael Caine, uh, Morgan Freeman movie or whatever. Maybe that that's... was. Or Last um, Vegas. There you go. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about that. That's probably the old version of, of Super Bad, the old people mm-hmm. version. Uh, as far as for me rating the marketing, I would give it a C plus average. You know, I'm sure they did the basic marketing materials. I didn't even know this movie existed until uh, word of mouth started spreading. So the movie is entertaining. It's fun. And people that do see it recommend it to other people. So it was recommended to me. And that's why I went out to see it. So average as far as marketing goes. Yeah, maybe maybe this movie's not for me. Maybe it's for whatever version of me is still in high school or middle school. I might have been an eighth grader, maybe ninth grader. Who knows how old I was when Super Bad came out? Maybe it's for maybe it's for those people, despite this being R rated. <laughs> and I felt like it was for me. As far as the story, I guess this is where we're gonna differ. Uh you go ahead. No. Uh, where do I I'd rather jump off of your points and debunk everything you're gonna say because I got a lot of complaining to do all right so as far as the story I like this because um it was it was fun it wasn't like hey we need to be raunchy to be funny it was no it kind of was though that's true it was kind of was but it didn't hit you over the head with the raunchiness because usually when they do the the girl version of something for example Ghostbusters Oceans 8 they take like minor details that made the guy version popular mm-hmm. and then just ramp it up to 10 or, or, or 11 and say, Oh, if somebody complains, you know, then we'll say, Hey, you're sexist because they did this in the guy version and you thought it was okay. And we're doing it in the girl version and it's not okay. Mm. Yeah. Like, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, society has progressed 
enough where it doesn't seem as as too uh, too a step too far or anything. But there was semi graphic talk of uh, lesbian intercourse, which is fine, I guess. But I'm not watching porn, so I don't know. <laughs> I get, I guess so. I don't recall Super Bad having a ton of cock humor, but there is a uh, plenty of a uh, badge eating humor in this movie. Oh, and it, and it didn't bother me. But yeah, see, uh, we're progressive. As, as far as cock humor, Super Bad did it, have like, the it, uh, ending with yeah, just I nothing mean, but cocks. It it wasn't. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was clever. That was cute. <laughs> see, uh, society's progressed. Uh, it, it's like it didn't take me out. It's like ew, girls talking about their peepees. <laughs> like I wasn't like that, but it was like it. it you know, it does. It has semi raunchy things. I, if we want to get later into spoilers, there's one scene that's not necessarily graphic, but it's kind of like semi uncomfortable or unsettling. I don't know. We'll we'll talk about that later when we get in more deeper into spoilers or a more spoiler heavy talk of the plot. Yeah, because I can't wait to um throw in a movie reference to what you're going to say if we're thinking about the same thing. Uh, Odds are we're not. <laughs> as far as story, it's it's nice. It's one of those little uh, high school stories of uh, uh, American Pie. It, it felt like a really nice puzzle, a simple puzzle, you know, 25 pieces that you're just putting together. Everything fits into place. The story has a flow to it and, and everything, it makes sense. And the way that things happen, they make sense. It's not like, oh, why did this scene happen? It just came out of nowhere. No, it, it's a nice little ride, like a, like a, you're on a track or a roller coaster. That's why I enjoyed the story. I mean, for me, this movie just needed to be, what wacky scenario can we put these kids in that's fu- like, like, hey, we decided to go out tonight. Can you believe this happened? And then this happened? And then this happened? And then this happened? Oh, we're finally at the party we were supposed to be at. But then stuff <laughs> happens there too. Like there's like very specific. Like you see every plot point happening. Not not that it's uh, not that it's um, necessarily uh, predictable, but just like okay, here he- here's uh, one here's one scene. You know, he- here's here's the yacht boat scene. Okay, here's the uh, mystery party scene. Here's the Uber ride scene. Here's the this scene, here's the that scene, here's the this scene, 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 scene. like, you know, you, you see everything happening. And it's been a while since I've seen Super Bad, but I guess you could say that all that stuff's in Super Bad. I'm probably going to compare that. No, I'm not going to compare this to Super Bad a lot because I don't remember much about Super Bad, except that I liked it when I was 14 or 15. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, hey, here's this one thing that happens and then another thing that happens and everything that ha- keeps happening goes wrong. But it's all for the, the, the point of, plot development for our two friends and you know see them break apart and then come back together in the end because they love each other or whatever (laughs) yeah i I like the way you dissect it and you know it just depends on your preference if you want a certain type of story that that it's it it's this and this and this and this then you're going to enjoy this movie and like you said if if you don't like those type of stories then you're just going to be scratching your head and and it's going to bother you it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. Yeah. I mean, if you're able to compartmentalize this movie and not say it's the this of this, you know, it's a super bad for girls or, you know, it's the high school uh, raunchy comedy of the 2019s or whatever. If you're able to take all of that out, then I'm pretty sure you're in for a fine enough time. But for me, I, I couldn't I couldn't separate myself from the past. If we don't re- follow history, we're only doomed to repeat it. <laughs> Well said. What about the acting? I mean, all I can say about the acting is everybody did a good job. Um, mm-hmm. As far as acting, it's pretty much everybody's supporting each other. It's not like one person stands out, you know, where in Super Bad you had Jonah Hill and uh, uh, his friend from Arrested Development that are like, hey, we're the main draw. So, like, all the jokes are to us. No, everybody in uh in in this movie book smart had the mentality of what was it like comedy sports or improv comedy where you're you're doing your part to help the other person in the movie or, or the other person on your team to look better well i mean to to shit on your point as i'm apt to do i mean the two leads are almost beat one for one the same character the same leads from super bad uh the redhead girl i have imdb on so caitlin dever dever you know the skinny redhead she's 
per- a perfect analog for Michael Sarah, kind of apprehensive, you know, want to do their own thing. And then ironically, Jonah Hill's little sister, played by Beanie <laughs> Feldstein, is essentially the same character as Jonah Hill was in Superbad, where like, you know, more more pushy, more assertive, more more aggressive towards doing what they want to do. So they're essentially the same characters. But they didn't supreme like they have good chemistry and they work well together and they're, you know, fun to watch sometimes. But I felt like every other character in the movie was more interesting than them. Like uh the principal was more interesting. The the douchebag character was more interesting. The uh the Mexican that kind of looks like a Native American is more interesting. Like everyone I kind of like when they were when the, the leads were on the screen, I was like, oh it's it's more been there done that but when you have more interesting out there characters on the screen that's when you know my eyes lit up a little more as i was like oh let's see what this let's see what this fun character is capable of doing in this movie oh and and it's funny i guess one of the other reasons why um i enjoyed the movie was you're mentioning the mexican and he reminded me of um from the show king of the hill bobby hill's best friend mm mm-hmm. you know i'm like oh my god it it's like all my favorite stuff is being put together in a pot. And, like, Are you I'm just saying that because he has long hair like him or because they're the same character? Or... I'm saying that because he's got long hair like him. Yeah, that's what I thought. I guess kind of in the same character because they're both. You never don't struck say me much. as a major fan of, uh, of King of the Hill. Not, not a major fan, but I ah, do love cartoons. I did catch you in a lie, though. <laughs> What about the the directing? It was Olivia Wilde, uh, her first time directing mm-hmm. uh, major motion picture. Um, she has a unique style of directing, in the sense that this felt like it was like a movie for the Instagram generation, the YouTube no. generation. Yeah, I don't I I don't know if I can necessarily pin this on Olivia Wilde, or if I should pin this on the cinematographer or director of photography or someone, but there are way too many scenes where it's just a close up of someone's face. And that's like, like it's annoying. It's absurdly close where like part of their forehead and part of their chin is lopped off from the top and the bottom of the screen. And that's a lot of this movie. And like, normally I don't pay attention to that stuff. I ignore it because normally that stuff is invisible or hidden to me because I don't think anyone would shoot a scene like that but there are way too many scenes that are shot way too close to somebody. And there's like not enough wide shots in this movie. It's, it seemed very weird and kind of amateurish. And it, another reason to take me out of this movie is just how not well shot it was. Yeah, that was kind of like where we would differ. So you hated it because it looked amateur, but then, you know, going back to, what I said, it seems like it's the Instagram or the YouTube generation. It's like somebody trying to do a, a selfie with their phone vlogging or something, how they, well, that's why they, it was cropped off. It's too close into the their team, face. Cause that's how you hold your phone. <laughs> apparently if you're an idiot. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I guess we'll just have to wait and see, uh, Olivia Wilde direct a few more projects and see, uh, if she's got a unique style of, of directing or if uh, she grew from her experience or she was an amateur when she made that movie. Mm. Yeah. We'll have to wait for round round two for her. Yeah. Who knows? She might be the next um, Bradley Cooper. Ooh. Or the next um, Casey Neistat. <laughs> or the next Key and Peel, the one that directed Get Out. No, that's a competent director. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to mention before we get into our, our recommendations? Mm-hmm. Uh, I got complaints. You know me. I, I can't not complain, but I mean, it was still a fine enough movie. I'll complain in spoiler talk. All righty. Anything you want to say as far as your recommendation? I always like when you go first. Uh, listen to me when I say don't listen to me. I, I'm a I'm a stickler for things that I don't like, and I don't like a lot of things. So I'll die an early grave. And <laughs> you, you people, you know, it's better to be pleasant than it is to be smart. So 
So be pleasant and watch this movie and enjoy it. And you'll have a good time at the uh, movie theater. And I'll be the old man from Up with a wife who died (laughs) early. And I'll tell little Cub Scouts or whatever to get off my damn lawn. (laughs) I'll uh, uh, Clint Eastwood from Gran Torino. Get off my lawn. Mm Mm-hmm. My recommendation for this, uh, if you love the high school movies, if you love Superbad, don't miss this. This is like if a, you do, like a if gem. If you do love Superbad, don't do miss this because you'll compare <laughs> the two so fiercely. <laughs> <laughs> it's just don't miss it because this is a gem. This is something that you're going to, to enjoy. Uh, if you're really picky about your movies, then I guess watch it when you get a chance. That way you don't feel pissed off that you – had to drive to the movie theater. You had to spend your money and, and watch this. But I did enjoy it. It was definitely worth the price of admission. Uh, the first, like, seven minutes or something is on YouTube. You can watch it. It's, like, from whatever company made the movie. If if what, You can watch the beginning. If you like it, go for it. If you, if you can't help yourself and say, eh, not for me, then I just saved you. $15 at the movies. <laughs> and uh, I guess that's where I need your help, people. Uh, please uh, comment or uh, download the Anchor app and send us a voicemail. How do I put that link in the description? So instead of you guys having to look for it, I'll do the work of looking for it and then just put the link in the description of our of our YouTube video so you can click and... You want and- other people to Google how to do your job for you? <laughs> <laughs> we're a community mm. when you send Whatever. us the link do not forget to go on let me google that for you.com so you can show him how much of an idiot he is <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're we're getting into the uh spoiler section of of the um the review here uh so if you don't want to be spoiled you know what to do, and if you don't mind being spoiled, or if you've seen the movie, hey, welcome to the spoiler section. You want to go first, or should I? Uh, I need to go first, because I got some complaining to do. Lucy, I've got some complaining to do. <laughs> okay, so so the inciting incident, for like, not necessarily the inciting incident, but like, they say in the, like, in the movie are two leads. They say, we need like we need to show everybody how fun we are, which is a really weird set statement for me. Like, so you worked hard and then you want to go out and party, but you you're like, I want, we want to show people how fun we are, which is a weird statement. I mean, initially it started off as, hey, we should do a party because we never partied, but I mean, it's not necessarily in their character. And then the weird kind of narcissistic tone of, we want to show people how great we are kind of a weird character divide for them but okay whatever uh the character of the douchebag doesn't make sense because you initially start off with like showing how like he's stupid and oblivious and annoying he is we're supposed to laugh at the buffoon uh it's written on his on his license plate uh, he's a fuck boy but like <laughs> why would he write fuck boy a fuck boy is generally an insult so okay may- maybe that's part of his character but then it eventually ties into yeah, he's still a douchebag, but he becomes one of the lead's romantic interest. Spoiler. And we <laughs> should care about him because I guess he has feelings or whatever. Uh, uh, boop, 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 boop. They're played by uh, Dan Fisher's uh, Princess Leia's daughter or granddaughter or whatever. I feel like I've seen that character a million times where they're kind of like, I feel like it's like Neil Patrick Harris from Harold and Kumar where they're like they're there every time the characters go to a new location. It's like, what are you doing here? And like, being wacky. I'm like, okay, I've seen that character a million times before. Uh, let's see what else. The the initial like so these the leads have initial romantic romantic uh characters that they're affiliated with. So uh the redhead girl, uh Caitlin Dever has like an attraction to a tomboyish girl. And uh, and uh, Beanie Feldstein, the other lead, has an attraction to the the doofus who was her vice president vice president on student council, and it uh, you're setting up like it's pretty obvious that you know the the romance stuff won't work, 
but it doesn't make s- sense. Like you start them off like, "Hey, I kind of like you." Like they both start off with, "Hey, I kind of like you. You're, I, we should hang out more. We should. This will be fun." And then they they do the twist to get your hopes to like set your hopes to get your hopes down. Like, "Hey, isn't it weird that both of the initial romantic interests are interested in each other, even though the tomboyish girl seemed kind of like a lesbian, I guess." And then they and and the the vice president seemed kind of interested and flirty with with the other girl and then they ne- they never seemed romantically interested with each other in the rest of the movie oh but now they are romantically interested with each other you're he, it, it, ugh. i don't i think the only reason they wrote it like that is because so they could have that scene where both friends could be mad at each other for no good reason like every movie needs to do uh let's see what else what else do i have any more thoughts uh, I wish I saw a movie about the gay guys with the, uh, oh, yes, the drama club. Yes. We were that more fun and spin-off. interesting. Eh, that's probably about it. Oh, and uh, the uh, the weird um, the weird hallucination scene was weird and off putting, and seemed to be like the only reason it was there is because they needed a scene to stand out from, I guess, Superbad or any other movie. But it was weird and off putting and poorly animated. And I did not like it at all, and it felt like a waste of my time. Well, this is, I think this that's is about the, uh, the first time where uh, we just have complete, uh, we disagree on everything. The the hallucination scene, I enjoyed it. I had fun. I'm like, wow, I've never seen something like that before. Uh, they didn't, they didn't leave hard. And, well, I mean, I, I remember like 22 Jump Street's been on cable like a million and two times, and they have a, a very fun interested like it looks very shittily shot the, the the hallucination scene in 22 jump street it's like literally them and like some some sweatpants channing tatum and jonah hill <laughs> hey jonah hill uh in sweatpants that they look like they bought from walmart in front of like a green screen and it works better and feels more creative and interesting than the hallucination scene in this movie which just looks like really shitty claymation and and as you were saying earlier it doesn't feel the need to be too raunchy well, the two plastic dolls stripping and groping each other feels weird and raunchy and seem to to have a semi-commentary on Barbie dolls or whatever and then on female attraction or whatever. I don't know. It, it just seemed like an excuse for them like to have a high scene. And then they seem to have gotten over it pretty quickly because they were like, the, although that scene felt like it lasted forever, them getting over it <laughs> took five minutes. <laughs> That's true. And... I guess I wasn't bothered by the the hallucination scene because it's like, hey, it's stuff that me and like other little boys do with our sister's Barbie dolls. Uh, I guess. But I mean, just at the bare minimum, it was poorly animated. And I guess it showed its low budget, by which I can say, then why did you have that scene? And then I guess the other thing that you mentioned that, uh, oh, you had these complaints about certain characters. I said, well, I liked how it made it seem like it's going to go into that way, the obvious love interest. And then it just swerves and goes in a different direction. I'm like, Oh, this is much better than what I thought you were going to give me. Well, I don't know. I, I, I knew, I knew cause so they introduced the other, like they introduced the hot girl at the very beginning of the movie who like says one line to, uh, the redhead lead in the beginning. I'm like, Oh, she's going to be a love interest. And then they never show her again. And then when the turn happens and then you see her back in the movie, it's like, oh, I guess I was right. So, like, I saw that coming. And, oh, and one more thing I have to complain about. Uh, uh, when the Mexican kid likes the teacher, it feels very similar to American Pie when Finch likes Oh, that yes, that, that was, uh, yeah, I, I see what you're, what you're saying. And I have the same thought there. See, everything just feels like been there, done I mean, that. When you were talking about the, the girl that was Princess Leia's daughter, that was just like the wacky character. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she was a little bit annoying. She was just wacky, but they had good awareness where it's like, hey, before this character gets on your nerves, she's going to leave. Leave the scene. But she does the same stuff over and over again. That's true. It's, I'm going to be weird. And like, every time she doesn't do anything other than I'm going to be weird. And then earlier when we were talking about the movie, you said there was uh, uh, this one raunchy scene that just uh, bothered you. 
the, that was the hallucination. It. That was the you were right. We had completely different things in mind because the one thing that I was talking about that I said, oh, I can't wait to talk about this in the spoilers. Uh, has anyone seen that movie Signs directed by M. Night Shyamalan where Joaquin Never Phoenix is talking about this girl that he's about to kiss and he put uh, away? Well, you know, in this movie, Booksmart, I bet one of the characters wishes she was chewing gum before she started making out. <laughs> movie reference. Boom. I don't know what you're talking oh, it's, about. It's uh, the scene where uh, one of the girls is going to make out with... We're in spoiler... Or we're in spoiler talks on, you know, the only okay. hold back nothing. So it's where uh, the girl, she's going to make out with her second love interest. She didn't get the first girl, but she's going to get the second girl, her love interest. And she's getting ready to make out with her. And I guess uh, the redhead had too much alcohol and she just starts puking. So if the second love interest was chewing gum, just like Joaquin Phoenix, and she turned away to put her gum away, just like Joaquin Phoenix mentioned in the movie Signs, she would have completely saved herself from being puked on. Was a throw up seen in Superbad or in another think. I feel like I'd seen a throw up. I think you have, but I don't remember a throw up scene in Superbad. What I remember in Superbad was the famous period blood. I don't, well, no, that was one where, like, was it? Did Michael Sarah throw up on his love oh, interest? Oh, you could be right. Maybe yeah, that could have happened. And, and also, See? it could have happened in 40 year old version as well. Or it happens in a million movies where a character throws up on a love interest and then it kind of spoils the, spoils the romance. But hey, don't worry, because they're going to come back later. Oh, yeah. So uh, so Redhead go, wants to go to Africa later. And then so wh- wh- why why go back to see a uh, hot, hot chick who's, uh, uh, you know, fluid in her sexual orientation or whatever, if you're probably not going to see her for months into, like from until months later. Are you talking about whatever. her first love interest or her second yeah. one? No, the first love okay, interest so the doesn't matter. One, the second Remember? one. They... <laughs> the hot chick. Not oh, the tomboy. Well, that's where it's confusing for me because I thought the tomboy was hot, hotter than the hot chick. Uh, no, because the hot chick is supposed to be hot, but like, you know, the kind of out there hot who's like hot, but like. She just like she, you know, she feels like she's superior to other people, not because she's hot, but because she feels like she knows more about life. <laughs> That's why she wears like a weird Native American jacket <laughs> with tassels and doesn't care about stuff or uh, whatever. I see. Where she's like, "Oh, I'm gonna travel the world." It's like, "Hey, maybe in six to twelve months you can see me in Africa." And she's like, "Oh, maybe." <laughs> That's what a cool person does. Hey, I'm inviting you. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whatever. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know why you, you, need, you need to drag us along for this romantic in love interest if you know you barely had any scenes together. But okay, <laughs> it's high school, I guess. And I guess maybe the reason why I like this movie so much was: uh, Have you ever been to a wrestling show or um, what is it, uh, uh, a concert where they say, "Hey, how's everyone doing in this town?" Woo! Well, this movie had a lot of those little shots from my neighborhood. I mean, the most exciting part for me in this movie was when they filmed the whole scene in my pizza shop. The pizza shop that I always go to and grab a slice of za. Mm. (laughs) He's only acting like this because he thought it was annoying that I just geeked out. I'm like, oh, all the local scenes, all the local spots. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought it was neat, but I mean, I'm not going to jerk myself off over it. <laughs> it's like, hey, that pizza place. Okay, moving on. Um, I'm not going to play Ookie Cookie on a slice <laughs> of pizza. It was neat. There you go. They foolishly decided to not get any tax credits and film this movie in California. How brave of you, Olivia <laughs> Wilde. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before we, we sign off? I'm giving you the last word. Is... Don't let my nitpicks prevent you from seeing this movie. Although now that you've heard them, uh, you can't avoid them. Assuming people listen to this, because who's going to listen to a podcast about the review of Booksmart? 
especially when the guy's bashing <laughs> on it. And uh, I guess before we sign off, um, I'm just curious to hear from you people, either right in the comment section. What do you mean audience, you people? People. People in the yeah. audience. <laughs> right in the comment section of our YouTube video or download the Anchor app and send us a voicemail. Have you seen Booksmart? If you have, what'd you think? Uh, or if you haven't seen it after watching our review or listening to it, would you consider watching it? I'm just curious what you guys have to say. Shouldn't you have these kinds of closing thoughts before the spoiler talk? So if people cut the cut the stream off before they listen to spoilers, they can hear all this stuff. Uh, what did you call me earlier? Because mm. I am an idiot. Well, bye, everybody. And if you want to keep up with us socially, uh, it's written somewhere on the image of our YouTube video. Bye-bye. Wow. Great way to sell yourself. <laughs>